Hello there, Dragon Ball Infinity. I am your DBI admin, Eichenbahn, and this is another roleplay review, this time for Black Sheep by Kraft, or Siru. Um, and this roleplay is a wonderful uh, example of world building within the Dragon Ball Infinity universe, and I, I really just want to spend some time right before we get into it. Um, just talking about how important that is, and, uh, and maybe, maybe talk a little bit about some of the reservations that some people, that, that some players seem to have about creating things, and acknowledge maybe some of the, the reasons why they're concerned about it. So, Seru, uh, Kraft, the, the player character who created this, um, this wonderful roleplay log, uh, they they invented an entire uh, what I would call a home world, a home planet, and in fact, um, there's a part of me that really wants to just make this the Vinian home world. Um, there's a part of me that really wants to say that like yeah, like they're intrinsically magical in some way. Um, I know that Vinians in game uh, are uh, physical specimens uh, for sure, like uh, my goat, uh, the horn. Um, but uh, we haven't really developed them as a race in in the roleplay setting. And I have, just because of the characteristics that Rindo chose when he made them, you know, I've used Moro from Dragon Ball Super to kind of represent them. Because, one, he's a wizard, uh, or some kind of sorcerer of some kind. And two, like, like the description between Moro and what we ended up with creating on our own with Vinian's like they they match up pretty well um we have an in-game area uh the the town of burgundy where you can go uh which is you know full of vineyards and and wine bars and and things but like they don't really have an identity on chat and i think i think this could be theirs i i think leaning into the moro thing leaning to the fact that they just happen to match up with this dark sorcerer from dragon ball super actually works super well um and this planet that uh, that he introduces, and again, it's not a planet, but uh, this city, the flying city of Zahiron, um, being the being the the quote unquote homeworld, is really cool. And Hypo does an amazing job of like explaining things here, like showing the ways of life. Like there's you know when he wakes up in the morning. You know, like he remark, like he doesn't remark on, but like he, like he, you know, he's taking his surroundings, like the this place is lavish, uh, with like you know, like every goblet has is encrusted with jewels and stuff. Um, you know, everyone wears these robes. You know, he's he's off to get his his staff. Um, it's this it, like it's a really magical world, and it's a great thing to see players create those kinds of, of set pieces and those kinds of like really important places that we can continue to add to the universe um, and like I on, like, like I said honestly I think that this maybe this is the home world of the Vinians maybe this is where we should be leaning in with them um, like let's let's take this and I, I know that uh, I know that craft is just one character he's just one person there's all kinds of different mages and things but like if this was their society, like, this is probably cooler than, uh, you know, whatever else we might have come up with. So, uh, I'm just going to workshop it a little bit, uh, throw it out there. Like, maybe this is what Vinian should be in roleplay. They're, they're the magic race. They're, they're quote-unquote the wizards. Um, not that they have to be that, but this is, like, their home world. Um, but regardless, it, it is a home world. It is a, a, a location, a very power a very cool location that i want to see more of in fact i want to see so much more of it that i'm planning on going there like immediately with zofu uh this is this is perfect uh I'm, and i would like to run into taco on my way um but um it, let's talk a little bit about creating places and, and npcs and stuff with uh in, within the roleplay setting and, and how comfortable should you feel about that and the and first thing i would say is go wild go nuts like this this is an insane idea this is really huge and when i talked like when sarah sent the bio through like i immediately authorized it and 
I will admit, uh, this is not a detriment, this is not, I'm, I'm not trying to be mean or anything, but there was one thing about it that I told him no. Like, uh, originally the city was supposed to be capable of teleporting, uh, literally instant transmission to other places. Maybe it was like in the Dracula style from Castlevania, like it would have taken some time for it to happen, there's mechanisms and things, but I told him like, no, you can't teleport. And, gonna be honest, he... He uh he deleted the character when I told him about this. Uh, we kind of had like a you know like a pretty hard conversation about the idea, and I think I, I think the the thing I think what he was concerned about was that I was not going to let him do his story, that he couldn't go to Arlia or something, and really my concern was with the teleportation process. Like I I didn't I don't want there to be like instant teleportation of any kind in the setting. Uh, it opens up a huge can of worms for lots of reasons I don't have time to go into, but um, so he like he, he got a little frustrated with me, and uh, was going to delete the whole character, was going to just like completely get rid of the idea, and I'm glad that he didn't. I'm glad that he stuck with it. I'm glad that we could talk through that, because um, genuinely, genuinely, uh, if you come to the to the administrators and you have like a, a world or an NPC or something. Like we we want to work with you. We want to give you. There's just there's a few things that's like yeah like we're gonna absolutely say no to this. Um, like the teleportation thing. Like we're like I have no problem that you go into Arlia. I have no problem with this city being a flying city that can like full of mages and all kinds of stuff. But the teleporting's too far. And it's like so whenever you whenever you approach world building within Dragon Ball Fendi, if there are gaps, if there are things that are missing. Or something that you want to insert somewhere, um, always talk to us. We will be happy to help you work out your idea. Uh, just also understand that ultimately we're the final arbiter. Uh, like ultimately, there there will be times where we're just going to tell you like flat out no. Like you can't do that. No, and you have to be willing and able to accept that. That doesn't like. But I I don't think there's ever been an instance where we have literally just like not been able to work with someone or not been able to take their idea and like find some way to insert it it's just that like every now and then like you guys come up with some crazy stuff and like we have to say no to certain things um, so be willing to take uh, take our counsel in mind and to accept that sometimes we're just going to tell you no but overall you should feel free to create things like this. Like this isn't basically an entire planet. This is, um, you know, again, an, a home world, and it's really cool. And I'm I'm glad that it's in the setting. I'm glad that it exists now. Um, it's a destination that I I as a person want to go to with one of my characters. Like this is exactly what I was waiting for. Um, so, you know, like. It's okay. You, you can you can make stuff. Just talk to us about what you make, and don't you know? Don't be upset if we have, if if we have to help guide you a little bit to, to make it more in tune with things. But you you should feel like you're able here on this channel to create and fill in the gaps in the setting. I want you to be able to feel that way, um, but I just also want you to you know be able to respect that there are certain boundaries that we're not going to let you cross. Um, regardless, uh, this log is uh, wonderful. It's a it was a really good read, and actually, Hypo or Seru um, Craft uh, included like a music video link so that I could listen to some the music. I assume the music he was listening to when he created it, or what like inspired it, or something. Um, and that that was really wonderful. I'm not saying that that should be done for every log or anything. Most most of them are too long to read for you to get through one music video, but this one like. I was able to listen to it and read it, and it, it like really added to the atmosphere, and that was wonderful. Um, Kraft is a young mage. He's uh, he's uh, is, this is the day where he receives his staff, and he heads to the Tree of Eternity, where he meets a, an archmage named Zizi, and uh, the staff that is created is a rare one, a uh, like unusual uh, because it delves into because it is a staff of dark power, uh, dark magic of some kind. And um, he's got a, a horn, uh, a horned helm, or like a, a, a helmet that he wears that is part of his family line. Um, it's, a, it's a wonderful read. I, 
I'm I don't have much to actually say, or even the synopsis that I'm giving. I think is a little bit a uh, little bit like held back because I want you guys to go read this uh, because the setting is really cool and I want you to like I really think that it is about this city it's not so much about his story uh, you know like he's just on his way he's just he's just getting into the universe he's just becoming a T let's call it a T-Zero character he just became T-Zero by getting this staff and so um, but the setting is really the the what is what we're here for what what we're here to learn a little bit about and we do learn things about craft don't get me wrong i don't i don't want the video to come across the same that like the character didn't matter or something um it adds to it but we're we're viewing this world from his lens from like his eyes whether it's the the djinn or the you know the magical being that has been bound to his family for a long time whether it's the you know the wonderful city whether it's the the history of this place you know like we're we're kind of getting to know um to here on uh through this um if i do have one critique uh one small critique about this uh and this is really hard. I like. I want to fully acknowledge that it is very difficult to avoid things like this. Uh, this is not like a. This is not an attack. This is not saying that it was done badly. But uh, there is a sentence early on here where he is describing the decor of his living room, and. Um, let me just make sure I find it. Zahiron was but a compilation of Middle Eastern mythology best described as the scene of 1001 nights eternally set in stone. Even crafts humble apartments constructed of white stone marble and com complemented by various linen crafts. Okay, so here's my one issue with this. Uh, and I know, again, fully acknowledging this is very hard not to do. But when you're saying Middle Eastern mythology, like that's a sentence that is meant for the audience, for the reader. Uh, that is like hearkening us to imagine what is here in our real world. And, uh, you know, when you're talking about the scene of 1001 Nights, you know, that's a book from our real world. Uh, those don't exist in Dragon Ball Infinity. There, there is no Middle East in in the Dragon Ball world, right? Like, there's no 1001 Nights necessarily. There might be something similar, but it, that specifically doesn't exist. And so, like, these kinds of sentences are really bad on the channel for the reason that, like, there's no reason this character should be alluding to it. Um, you know, if you should be able to describe the decor in a way that doesn't need to be accented by it's Middle Eastern or that it looks like what you would expect from 1001 Nights. Like, if you can't describe it, then uh, you're not, like, you're not role-playing the character and you're not even role-playing the setting. Like, you're you're using everyone's, like, catalog of information to, uh, to try to fill in the gaps a little bit. And that means that you haven't thought about your, thought about what you're doing as much as maybe you should. Um, so this is the one sentence, the one thing in the, in the log that like I kind of disagree with. It's like, I, I would strongly recommend that you never do something like this. I, I don't think that it's uh, conductive, conducive to uh, role-playing. I think that it's kind of a, it, it, I feel like you're kind of cheating a little bit by trying to invoke what our worldly things are. Also, it's, uh, I'm not going to say it's, it's, um, you're, you're actually relying very strongly on stereotype uh, by by doing this. Uh, you are trying to invoke an image of the Middle East, like that's just one location, like Agrabah and uh, from Disney's Aladdin is the Middle East. Um, when like when the Taj Mahal is actually you know like not even in the Middle East, um, so uh, you. Like, I'd be careful about this. This, like, I, I didn't like this sentence a lot. And again, I tend to hyperfixate on certain details about things, but, like, this is this is one of the things I would definitely recommend you do not do. Um, because 
your characters should be speaking from their viewpoint of the world, and a sentence like this takes you di directly out of your world, uh, out of the out of the role play setting to the real world, and then it has all kinds of different connotations that you don't necessarily understand. Um, so, uh, yeah. Um, peace out, internet.